Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my January 2024 uh, reading wrap-up. Dane reads. So I have two books to tell you. The first one is The Shaggy Man of Oz by Jack Snow. Cracking little read. It's book number 38 in the Oz series. Jack Snow did about four of them, and they've all been pretty high quality, so I have enjoyed them. Um, as you can imagine, this focuses heavily on The Shaggy Man. It also has a character in it called Twink, um, which is gay slang for, like, a young sexually attractive man I suppose so yeah it was weird to read about like twink ejaculating and stuff and twink arousing and suspicions and all of that it was just like wow okay um, but you get that a lot with the Oz books a lot of them are unintentionally dirty without meaning to be um, but overall I probably gave this one like a week four out of five it was one of the stronger Oz books like it even it was better than some of the original ones and rivaled the best of the best really um, so I did enjoy that and then I read uh, Mostly Harmless by Douglas Adams, which is book five in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. Um, I'd sort of seen on Goodreads, I hadn't bothered to actually properly look at them, but I'd seen that it had some negative reviews, um, which kind of surprised me because it's Douglas Adams, the guy was a genius, you know. Um, but as I said, I didn't dig into why those negative reviews were there or what they were about or anything like that. Um, I personally really enjoyed it. You get to see a lot of our old favourite characters, like uh, Ford Prefect's in it, Arthur Dent is in it, Arthur has a daughter as well, and we get to see her. There's also a new, uh, like a new edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, as in the fictional book, not the actual book. <laughs> and um, yeah, lots of stuff about like parallel universes and causality and all of that stuff. So it was very funny, but it was also very interesting and very thought provoking. What's, what's not to like? I gave it probably a 4.5 out of 5 thinking about it. Yeah, it was good. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. I don't have a physical book of this because I listened to the audiobook. It is The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner by Stephanie Meyer, who's... I've, I've finally real, like come to terms with the fact that her surname is spelled M-E-Y-E-R instead of M-A-Y-E-R. Now it turns out her first name is spelled S-T-E... P-H-E-N-I-E -E, rather than S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E -E, like normal people spell Stephanie so I've just been spelling her name wrong all kinds of ways um, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner is billed as book 3.5 in the Twilight Saga it basically just tells the story of one of the minor characters who I remember her being in it but I couldn't tell you what her role was or anything like that but basically she's like a young new vampire and uh, yeah it tells the story of her short second life it's all right um, I only give this one a 3.5 out of 5 um, especially in relation to particularly like the latter two Twilight books uh, Eclipse and Breaking Dawn both of which just jumped the shark and you have like teenage werewolves falling in love with babies because they're bonded and weird shit like that um, yeah well the spoiler alert is is that in the actual Twilight series Jacob keeps sexually assaulting uh, Bella um, keeps kissing it and then she's like trying to fight him off and he just won't let her and then she like goes completely rigid to try and stop him and he's still just kissing her and then he's like yeah you love me you love me you love me and eventually he gaslights her into thinking yes that, I, that she does love him and then she has a baby and then it turns out he's bonded to her baby which means like he's gonna have sexy times with the baby once the baby grows up and it's just fucking weird man and like she's like I can't go anywhere with you know I, we can't leave um, Jacob and the baby apart for too long and it's like why the guy is a predator he should be in jail why do you care about letting him near your baby? He he literally wants he's bonded to your baby. Like you should be you should be killing him. I would have been killing him. I would, especially if I was Edward. I'd have been well, I'm a pacifist, but if I was a vampire, I suppose Edward kind of is a pacifist. But they do kill people as well. So yeah, Jacob, you'd have been fucking kaput. Anyway, you don't have as many of those problems with the short second life of Brie Tanner, so it was a lot better because of that. Um but yeah, it's just, uh, you, know, you know, I'm only keeping going with these now because I can. Alrighty guys, just a few books to wrap up for you today. The first of them is Dodger's Guide to London by Terry Pratchett. So I actually don't know how involved he was with this book. Um, Dodger is one of his uh, sort of standalones set in Victorian London and it's basically a non-fiction guide to what life was like in Victorian London. Spoiler alert, it was pretty horrible. Um, but told, you know, with the with the character Dodger and, uh, you know, the world, the, the Victorian London that he lived in. 
Interesting enough, it reminded me of uh, one of the Terry Deary Horrible Histories books, to be honest. Quite humorous, uh, quite informative as well. I gave it like a middle of the road 3.5 out of 5. Then I read The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett, which is the final Discworld novel. Features Tiffany A. King um, with a big showdown with the elves. It is kind of quite a decent little end to the Discworld, really, because uh, it features the death of a major, major character who's been there since right, to the, right since the start. So it's kind of moving to see Pratchett bid farewell to her, knowing that he, you know, his own life was coming to an end as well. Um, but I am now sad. That there's no more Discworld for me to read. I would gave it a four out of five. It was pretty good. I mean, my favourite sub series is the City Watch, so I probably would have preferred for it to end on that. But yeah, and it's bittersweet knowing that it's now over. And then I read uh, In the Jingle Jangle Jungle by Joel Gion. Uh, he is the tambourine player from the Brian Jonestown Massacre. This was actually uh, an ARC read um, that was sent to me by the publisher, and it was fascinating just to learn about you know his life. Uh, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, California music scene, kind of sh shoegaze movement, uh, and then like Britpop was kicking off, like he tried to uh, share his speed with one of the Gallagher brothers from Oasis and things. Lots of drug references in it. I mean, at one point he was, you know, paying his rent by helping to make LSD. Um, but yeah, really fascinating read. Probably a 4.5 out of 5. One of the best music memoirs in general I've read. I am biased because they're one of my favourite bands as well. But really well written, really well told. And uh, I'll hopefully be interviewing uh, Joel for my radio show as well. To keep, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Especially because, as I say, he's one of my heroes. Uh, it is also a full review. is coming soon. Just keep your eyes peeled. Alrighty folks, just got the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Life and Death by um, Stephanie Meyer. This is the reimagining of the first Twilight novel with all the genders swapped. I actually thought it was just Edward and Bella who were going to have their gender swap, but like everybody does, or almost everybody. Like Carlisle is a woman and you know, all that stuff. Uh, it is actually quite interesting, I, I did quite enjoy it because it does put a new spin on things. Swapping the gender actually does make quite a lot of difference in terms of the dynamics and Kind of makes Edward a bit less creepy for being this like old dude after a young woman. It's now a, an old woman after a young dude. Um, which I don't think it should make a difference, but it does, you know. Um, so it's kind of interesting to revisit it. But at the same time, I'm kind of jaded because I just read Midnight Sun. Which was the retelling of that book, but from Edward's point of view. And so it's like I've now, over the last two or three months, I've basically read that book read it from a different character's point of view, read it with the gender swapped, and watched the movie of it. And like, it, you know, it's it's okay. It's certainly better than the rest of the series, but um, I'm glad I'm done as well. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5 for me. Uh, Listen to it via audiobook, and I'm now very excited to be getting back to some David Attenborough audiobooks. Alrighty guys, just got two books to wrap up for you today. The first is The Meaning of Lift by Douglas Adams and John Lloyd. So this is basically, looks like a Bible, but it's not. It's a little dictionary of humorous, um, fictitious definitions based on place names. So for example, uh, let's see. Saffron Walden, noun. A particularly kind of hideous casual jacket that nobody wears in real life but which is much favoured by Ronnie Bar Barker uh, or Henstridge noun the dried yellow substance found between the prongs of forks in restaurants so it's just a humorous little thing by uh, Douglas Adams who created the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and John Lloyd who is a radio producer and television producer who's done a lot of cool stuff who's uh, involved in the creation of QI for example which is one of my favourite TV shows so that was probably a 3.5 out of 5 it's not that it's a bad book it's just that it's kind of a gimmick and once you've read a bit of it you've read all of it you know um, and then I read um, The Patriarchs by Angela Saini so this is non-fiction about the patriarchy basically she does this really kind of she does what uh, a little bit like what Doug, um, uh, what Bill Bryson does with his science writing by making it very approachable to the general public and especially you know in today's day and age I think a book like this is very important it, it covers how we ended up with such a situation in the first place in which we have a patriarchy um, and you know as, as a dude I feel like I need to understand how that happened so that I can do my part in helping to smash the patriarchy and create a more fair and just society. Uh, really well written because it's Angela Saini, she does a good job with everything that she touches. I gave it like a 4 out of 5, it was good. 
So there we have it, those are all the books that I read in the month of January 2024. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.